Hey y'all, this is the film grain filter for our filters class here at Hummies World and here is the layout that I made utilizing the filter and um, if you zoom in here you can see the film grain that I created on the sign of this building and if I take it off of the building you can see the original so here's what the original photo actually looks like and when I add the film grain you can see it really brings the eye more to the building because I wanted it to be with the building um, so you could see the location um, plus it really helps I think to give it a more of an old-timey look and this was an old-timey type restaurant that we went to and so let's talk a little bit about film grain I have here the Wikipedia page and it says film grain or granularity is a random optical texture of processed photographic film due to the presence of small particles of a metallic silver or dye cloud developed and it goes on much of, most of this does not even sink in <laughs> but um, it is something that happens naturally in um, film photography as opposed to digital digital photography on the faster films or the higher light sensitive films now um, it, if you go down here on this page it says digital photography does not exhibit film grain since there's nothing there's no film or any grain to exist when it, within it so it's some stuff in the film itself that ends up making it grainy when you take the photos however in digital cameras we get what we call image noise and um, and you may be familiar with in Photoshop how there are things to take out noise especially if we get to the higher ISO which ISO is equivalent to light sensitivity if so if you have a higher ISO to take those night photos you're going to get more um, noise but um, film grain is a little bit different than noise um, and that is because it it's a lot more uh, random blots of things um, the noise that we are getting when we ha uh, apply the noise in Photoshop and Photoshop elements um, is kind of even over the whole page we'll look at that more here in a little bit but um, let's look at the YouTube video I found because they also have some photos on YouTube that show film grain in actual movie film and I think as you look at this you're going to recognize film grain you've seen this in older uh, movies and you see all the little dots and the splots um, and so that is what film grain is in um, movie theaters that might help you I think relate I'm going to close these out so uh, let's go back to my photo and I'm going to remove or make invisible these two originals and I've got my background layer and I'm going to duplicate it now I can do the grain filter the film grain filter right here on this photo go up to filter I think it was artistic and then film grain and this does bring up the filter gallery and I'm going to go ahead and zoom in to 100% so we can look at this a little bit better and here's the edge of my building and um, I think this is some settings that I chose while um, I last used this but you have here three sliders one of them reduces see down to zero there is no film grain and then as you raise it 
it slowly gets more and more film grain in it and if you go all the way up to 20 it looks pretty bad I'm not even sure what the purpose of that would be uh, to have it up that high uh, but you're going to want something that looks a little more natural now I said I would talk a little bit later more about the film versus the digital film grain um, in uh, the regular film it the the spots actually were create created using um, the light the light in the dark areas of your photo were actually uh, processed differently and the the stuff actually got on them differently on the lighter areas than it did the darker areas um, and that kind of made it is what made the clumps more random in order to do that in Photoshop um, and to emulate that they have this highlighted area and the intensity area sliders and what they do is they apply different textures to the lighter areas and the middle areas and the darker tones and so instead of it just being okay this is the light and this is going to cause this kind of splot, splash dot piece of little grain on it um, they had to come up with something in Photoshop to emulate that and so the lighter areas are going to get one kind of texture the middle areas are going to get another kind of texture and the darker areas are going to get another kind of texture and so if you move this you're going to see and I think we need to zoom out just a little bit because I think that for this photo you need to see more of it here's the way it looks with the darker areas or with the highlight up to 20 and you can see it really has pixelated the dark areas here and given them a di different texture in her her clothing where it's dark as opposed to up here and as we lighten it and that may be the intensity slider doing that down there on her clothes but the intensity right now is on zero so let's take it up and you can see how this is really making a difference you can see where the lighter areas are changing and highlighting and getting much lighter you can see especially the highlights changing here in the street as I move up the intensity and now I'm moving up the highlight area slider and it's actually almost blowing out the lighter areas and really covering them with uh, grain it's like when you move up the highlighted area it chooses more of the photo it starts out down here where it's not really putting any grain in the lighter areas and then it as you move it up it includes more and more shades you see it coming up across the road because it's including a little bit darker and now when I move it up a little bit more a little bit more of the darker area it includes it just keeps including a little bit more of the darkness as you as you move it up until it includes the whole thing when you get up here to 20 and so these two sliders that's what they do so I personally don't like putting it right here on the original photo you can do that but because you have a little bit of knowledge now that um, this filter does work different on different lightnesses and shades darknesses it works different you can manipulate that by first making this into a black or white photo and changing the intensity of the blackness 
or whiteness with some other skills that you have before you apply the filter. I hope that made sense. <laughs> so we're going to go up to the Enhanced drop-down menu and I'm going to go ahead and press Convert to Black and White. I don't remember how I did this last time. Um, I think actually last time um, you, you have to go back to all your other tools and tutorials and knowledge. Um, last time I think I adjusted color curves and I increased the contrast first, especially for the highlights. I don't remember which way I took it. Oh, I think I took it this way because you can see I wanted the focus to be more on the building and so um, I took it this way to adjust the color curves um, to make because it makes it brighter here. This is the original if you see and as you move it this way you see more of the focus before and after. This The highlighted areas are more blown out and I did that on purpose. Of course your image is going to be different than mine in different purposes. You may want to lower the highlights or you may want to you know, bring, let's bring up the contrast some. I didn't want to bring up the contrast any. And then after I did that, I used the convert to black and white. And I think I chose this one, vivid landscapes, because I was going after highlighting that area up here rather than down here in my photo and uh, so I really bumped it up and clicked OK and now I had a different black and white that emphasized some light areas of my photo. So there are lots of ways that you can do this. Um, you can even use the um, brightness and contrast adjustment layer if you want. Um, there there are many ways that you can affect the lightness but once you get it where you want it then you can go back up to your filter artistic and film grain and we're gonna zoom it in again to 100 percent so I can see in and out a little bit so I can kinda see what what we have going on here and then you can move the sliders to kind of get the effect that you might want. See, I've, in my case I've already blown out the lights and so by increasing the intensity um, too much that didn't work. And then you click OK when you get it to where you want it and now you can see a really grainy black and white photo but then I have the original right under this one so if you apply either I, the overlay which this is what whoops let's go back I was trying to zoom in this is the um, way the overlay one looks but I think I had the hard light is the one I chose because it really made it more old-timey and then as you can see here what I did in this layer here was to add a layer mask because I didn't want her to be all grainy I just wanted her to be in a scene that looked old-time so I'm in Photoshop Elements 9 right now so if you are in um, the version that has the layer mask you can just add it here get your brush tool and make sure you have black because I'm going to be concealing it and I just concealed actually I, w I worked at it for quite a while but you just go over the parts that you don't want but you can see here it didn't um, blend very well into the background and so you're going to want to lower the opacity and gradually do this and I took a long time in doing that as you can see my layer mask um, for this one has a lot of spotty stuff on it. Now when we were watching that film grain movie um, 
you notice there was a lot of streaks going up and down. I created that and added it to mine. Here you can see before and after. And that was to make it even more old-timey. And let me show you how I did that. Create a new layer and get your brush tool and find some kind of really grainy brush. I think I went into wet media maybe. Got rough ink. I don't remember what I used. <laughs> Made it very large and just drew. I've got black here and just randomly punched down on my image until I had random inky spots all over it. So you can make it and then when you get some kind of random inky spots you can use smaller brushes if you want how if that works better then go to the filter blur and motion blur filter and you can see I already have the settings. You can see what it did right there. I um, already had the settings from when I utilized it. But you change the angle to 90 degrees so that it's the motion is going up and down, straight up and down, like it, like the lines are in the the movie that we viewed. And then you change the blur. See, this is not blurry enough, so you have to really get it up there enough to really stretch it out to wherever it looks good and click OK and then you can leave it like that or you can try uh, various blending modes that is the um, I don't know what I did here I did hard light at 100 percent on that one so go back to the one we just created hard light at 100 percent was what I ended up at um, if you need to you can lower the